All right, let's open our Bibles to Matthew chapter 7. Verse 24. <clears throat> Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father, we come before you this morning and we thank you for your goodness and for your mercy. Lord, we just ask this morning for wisdom, Father, and guidance in your word. Help us to have ears to hear and eyes to see. Give us understanding and wisdom, Father. And again, we thank you for all that you do for us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we'll read a few verses here. Verse 24, it says, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them may be compared to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and slammed against that house, and yet it did not fall, for it had been founded on a rock. Everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and slammed against that house and it fell and great was its fall. When Jesus had finished these words, the crowds were amazed at his teaching for he was teaching them as one having authority and not as the scribes. What I want to talk about this morning is uh, there's verses in Corinthians and Romans all, all through it talks about people who follow the letter of the law and not the spirit of the law. And whenever uh, we think about that, the first thing we think about is the old covenant and people keeping that covenant and then the new covenant introduced and so we just... Uh, everything in the Old Testament means nothing anymore. But what he's saying, what the problem is, is I want to talk about is the two spirits. There's only two spirits in the world. There's the spirit of God and there's the spirit of the world. That is all. You know, we, we see so many different diversities and so many different thoughts and so many different things but there are two spirits in this world, the spirit of the Lord and the spirit of God. And the spirit of the Lord from the very beginning is the spirit of the Lord. And it has the same spirit. He is the same spirit. He's from everlasting to everlasting. He doesn't change. It's the same person. He's the same spirit. And in the... the uh, uh, the spirit of the world, whenever he chose to rebel against God, the, the world, the spirit that's in the world is the same. And as you read the Bible from the beginning to end, what you see is a whole bunch of different things. Situations change. Circumstances change. Some of the rules even change. But the spirits do not. And what used to happen in the Old Testament that was against God keeps reoccurring over and over again with different names, different faces, different ways, different methods, different all kinds of different things. But as you look, it's the same spirit. And when we read... In the New Testament, the battle was with the, the Judaizers and the people who were trying to, to bring all this into the New Testament. We, we can see that whenever they were talking about the spirit of the law and the letter of the law, that there was a battle there going on. And what I want to talk about this morning is, <coughs> is today that same battle is still going on. 
We've talked about having the Pharisees and how people were Pharisees and we can read about them in the Bible and how they acted and how they did and what they were trying to do. But the problem is, is we don't recognize that they're still here today. Not because they have the same name as the Pharisees, not because they're doing the same thing, trying to promote the same thing, but they have the same spirit. It just comes with a different face. And that's what where discernment and understanding comes in of following the spirit of the Lord is being able to see the spiritual life on both sides of this. It's not about whenever it, the Bible talks about keeping the letter of the law. It is not talking about doing everything perfectly according to how it's written. Keeping the rules perfectly. See, we think, well, the Jewish people, they were just trying to keep the Jewish laws perfectly. And they were scribes and they were Pharisees. They gave their, they devoted their whole lives to living within the realms of the rules of those laws. I mean, they were zealous. They were ambitious. They were inspired. They were very, very sincere to keep the law as it was written. It was written down. It didn't change. And so in their sincerity, you know, we look at people and we say, oh, they're so sincere. But we see people who are so sincere in every walk of life. And we're sympathetic to them because of their devotion to what they're trying to do. But sincerity to something wrong is still wrong. It's not the sincerity of our devotion to something wrong that God is going to judge us on. He's going to judge us on what spirit are you of? You see, we see those people and they try, they're trying to keep the law perfectly. And we've got an idea that they're all just conniving and sneaking around. These people were sincere. Very caring and devoted to what they thought was supposed to be right. Today, we've taken, we heard these words that Jesus just talked about. That he that hears these words of mine and does them is like the one who builds his house upon the rock. Could it be that today, right now, there are people who are taking the kingdom of God message, the teachings of Jesus, and being so strictly devoted to them that they actually have the same spirit as that of the scribes and the Pharisees? Their devotion and their sincerity is so dedicated to the teachings of Jesus that they're so careful to guard every little dot and every little T in the teachings of Jesus. And they look so good. They talk so swell, so sincere, so concerned and so caring and seem so loving. There's only two spirits in the world. And that spirit keeps reoccurring and reoccurring and reoccurring, whether it's holding up the law or whether it's holding up the teachings of Jesus. It's the spirit of the thing that proves what side it is on, not the perfection of keeping the law, keeping the teachings of Jesus. It, but when you marry the two spirits, you bring them both together 
it doesn't matter whether they're keeping the teachings of Buddha. There's people who keep the teachings of Buddha with that strict sincerity. And they seem so sincere, so careful, but yet they still have that same spirit. See, we've painted this spirit that they had as something really, really bad and just don't hardly think that it could happen again today. There's only two spirits in the world. There's the spirit of the Lord and the spirit of the world. These two spirits you know there's a lot mentioned about quarreling today in the, in the children's lesson that it's better to be poor and without food than to live in a quarreling house. You know where that quarreling spirit comes from? It comes from someone who's right. They're not wrong. They are actually the one that's right. And so they quarrel and they quarrel and they quarrel because I'm right. You are wrong. And they have this spirit of being right which gives them the idea of moral superiority so that they can throw out everything that's good and righteous because they are right. That's the spirit of the law. The spirit of the law is not wrong. That's what makes it so dangerous. The spirit of the law is right. But it's wrong because the focus is on me being right and me doing right instead of righteousness and actually being right. You see, that's why Jesus and the Bible talks so much about a person that's right doesn't have to defend himself all the time. He can state what's right and wrong and let it go. But a person that's got the spirit of the law has to just keep it up and keep it up and keep it up and be in your face and doing it this way because they're right. And dead wrong. That's what the Bible talks about when the spirit of the law the killeth. And the spirit of life gives liberty. You know, the spirit of life, people can be showing you and telling you you're wrong. But you're following that spirit of life. You don't have to be right. You don't have to be the one to quarrel and give the argument. Why does something right have to defend itself against something wrong. Husbands, why do you argue with your wife when she won't listen to you? Why do you argue with your wife when she won't listen to you? Well, of course she's supposed to listen to you. It's right for her to listen to you. You need to make sure she knows she has to listen to you. Because you're the husband. You need to argue with her and be in her face and make sure she knows that. And you're right. But you're dead wrong. Being right does not have to prove anything to anyone else. That's why being right can turn the other cheek. Being right can just let it go. Being right can say, the Lord will take care of this. The Lord will judge. 
but being right, following the letter of the law, we've got to jump up and defend ourselves and make sure we set everybody straight. And someone else has got a valid point. Maybe even though the husband is supposed to be the head of the home, he's doing some really dumb things. And so the wife sees how dumb a things he's a doing. And so she thinks that's wrong. And it's clearly wrong. And so she is right. You see, an argument only comes when both people are right. Whenever one of you is wrong, there's no argument. You're agreeing with each other. Quarreling comes when both of you are right. And so now there's a contest to see who's the most right. And so we start arguing and arguing and arguing and pretty soon it's a full-blown fight because you're right. And both of you get righter and righter and righter and righter as you go along, don't you? But if one of you was really right, you don't have to say anything. You don't have to say anything. One of the last verses, what was that last verse in, the, in that study that we did this morning? Does anybody can just tell what it says? Yeah, what was it? Okay. A patient man is better than a strong man. And he who controls his temper is better than he who can take a city. A right man can be wronged and be right. A wrong man can be right and be wrong. That's the difference between the spirit of the law and the spirit of liberty. The spirit of the Lord. We can have everything right and I don't know how many times we talk to people and they find some Bible verse that just proves they are right. And by the letter, they probably are. And if you try to contend with them, you wind up in a big quarrel because you're trying to convince somebody that's right that they're wrong. And you can't hardly do that. It just don't work. Sometimes we try out of our just concern. Maybe you can, maybe giving them the benefit of the doubt that they've got, you know, that they really want what's right. And so you try to present it and it just gets deeper and deeper and deeper. There's a time you've got to quit being right and just let it go. We, uh, just this week we were with some people uh, and talked to, talked to some people that were uh, convinced that what they were doing was right because the Bible said so. The Bible said so. And so, everything you brought to them, it didn't matter because the Bible said so. It didn't matter that the Bible said something, two things, because their focus was on one. 
they had the spirit of the law. You know, we've presented the argument before about we believe the women should wear a covering. The Bible says so. And I don't know how many women I have saw or heard that say the Bible says I should wear a covering. So they put a rag on their head and say I'm doing this because God told me to do this. And their husband says I don't want you wearing that. And she says God told me to do this. God told me to put this on. I don't have to listen to you. I'm not going to listen to a man. God told me to do this. You read the Bible and it explains clearly in 1 Corinthians 11 that the purpose of this being on their head is to show that she is in submission to her husband. The very purpose of this thing being on her head is to show that she is in submission in a meek and quiet manner to her husband, who the Bible also says for her to reverence as he was the Lord himself. But yet, she's heard from God, I'm going to put this rag on my head because God said so and I don't care who says anything different. You just as well get your pharisaical robe and put it on and get you a whole pocket full of rocks to start throwing stones because the Spirit is no different than that. The Spirit of the law. You see, a lot of times to do what's right looks wrong. To really follow the Spirit of God in the world sometimes looks exactly opposite of what the letter of the law says. So for a woman to have a meek and quiet spirit and would love to wear this covering, but her husband says no, it appears to her, to the church and to everyone else that she's wrong. She should be listening to God herself. And they forget that God himself set up an order in the home that the husband was to be the head and the woman was to listen to him. Not be listening to God all by herself. God set up that order. And if you want to peck at the, you know, law, which has the most weight in it, just putting a piece of cloth on your head or hearing the Spirit of God as He created us, which is weightier. In the beginning, God created a man and He created a woman to be His helper. That was how God created us from the very beginning. Today, we think that when we're born again, we become some super spiritual being that does all kinds of wonderful things. And that me, if you're, if you're a woman, you're now in tune with God because you're listening to Him. Well, I believe that Jesus was the second Adam. He was the incarnation of what God created in the very first place. Jesus didn't come and die to make us something better than God created in the first place. He came to restore us to what God made in the first place. All He wants out of you is for you to be a man that loves God and loves his neighbor as himself. Not because it's the rule book. It's because if you have true love in your heart for God and man, 
you're going to be concerned about what's really right, not what just looks right. And if you're a woman created in God's image or for, for by, to be a helper, following the one created in God's image, your purpose is to be a helper, not some super spiritual Bible quoting evangelist. Because in Peter it says that in of great value to God is a woman with a meek and quiet spirit. How many things in the Bible do you see that God puts a great value on? If you want to be valuable to God, look at what He wants and says that is of a great value to Him. And one of those is being a woman with a meek and quiet spirit. Not a woman making sure she has all her rights. Not a woman making sure she's obeying every letter of the law. But a woman with a meek and quiet spirit. Because that's the spirit of the law. That's the spirit of God at work. There's only one God. He created things the way they were. And He wants things the way He created them. He wasn't stupid. He wasn't dumb. He's not on a learning curve. He made us the way He wanted us to be. Now you can drill that, husbands. And you can make sure you're right. She ought to listen to you. And you can have a big old fight about it. And both of you are wrong. Both of you lose. Plus everybody around you. Or you can follow the true spirit of what God wants. And you don't have to fight about it. You don't have to defend it. You don't have to prove it. You need to be the one that takes the higher ground. Maybe lower yourself. And be the calm one. Be the patient one. Be the one who's better than the one who takes the city. So what if you're able to win the argument and put her down? You're the tough one. You can take the city. But it's better. A patient man is better than the one who takes the city. We all want to be heard. That's the problem. We all think what we know, everybody else needs to know. That's where our gossip comes from. We all want to be heard. Because we're right. You know, this verse we read about Jesus and when Jesus had finished these words the crowds were amazed at his teachings for he was teaching them as one having authority and not as the scribes the scribes taught as the authority he taught having the authority he didn't have to convince them of anything he taught them and let him decide because he was the authority. Everybody wants to be heard. Everybody wants to be heard. You know, I think this is the problem with prayer. You know, Jesus said, everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does them, that's who builds his house on the rock. 
we're on the we're wanting to teach all of these things instead of doing them because we want to be heard instead of hearing how many times do we pray and our prayer is so that God will hear us our concern about prayer is God hearing us the purpose for prayer is for us to hear God no matter what you think you've been said, God is really not interested in your opinion on anything. He don't care about your opinion. He wants you to hear Him. And we spend all of our measly little time in existence trying to get Him to hear us. Why would He hear us? It makes us feel better whenever someone's heard us out. Don't it? But we haven't heard what He has to say. What God wants us to do is to hear Him. Not just the dead letters. Not just our opinion and not just what we want. He wants us to hear Him. Hear the Spirit that created all things that is still speaking today just like it was then. And don't be the Spirit of the letter, the Spirit of the world that don't want to hear Him. That's the Spirit that wants to be heard because they're right. And you know, that one spirit, it's amazing to me, the strictest people in the world, the most Christian, the most religious people in the world, when you really look at the most vile person in the world, the most anti-God person in the world, they still have the same spirit. They still want you to hear them. They still are right and want to win the argument. Don't get caught up. Be wise enough to understand, to discern what's really right, not just being right. May the Lord add his blessings. Anyone have a comment? Question? Well, I really appreciate that thought uh, along with this that you, you gave in Mexico about America. They had all the found path that said, yes, we agree that headship is God, Christ, man, woman, child. And, uh, and, and that's the way it's supposed to be. But Same spirit. I really appreciate that. Just respond to that. Only that. To the reasoning there. I don't know if they got it.
not a blessing to the rest of us. Another problem with that is who determines when someone loses their authority? That's right. It's usually the person under them. Right. 